This thing is pretty stuck. Huh. Oh boy, this was heavy. I finally got the last missing pieces for this project. And this was these two steel plates that I needed. Didn't think steel would weigh this much, but yeah. I wish I really had some kind of a country grain up here like Andrew has. Maybe I will put something down the road, but yeah, there really isn't much room here, sadly. But anyway, the title says what these plates are for. And these were the last missing pieces that I needed for this project. The rest of the steel that I have is here. And I got this steel like three years ago, but I never really started this project off. I, I always wanted to build a dump trailer, but for some reason, I, I think I just didn't have time to deal with it. But now that I have these two steel plates, I think I just have to do it because they just take up so much room. By the way, this was about 40% cheaper than plywood. That's why I went with the steel instead of plywood. Instead of buying OSP and plywood guys, just buy steel sheets. So let's go check out my plan that I have for this build. So I'm missing one thing that I still need to buy and that's the hydraulics. But I'm thinking I'm gonna do that later. Yeah, let's do that later. So my idea is that uh, I wanna kind of refurbish this trailer into a dump trailer. Currently it's a log trailer and I only use it like once a year and the rest of the year it's just sitting here being sad so I want to add some more use to this thing plus I don't need to use that much steel uh, because the trailer is pretty much finished I only need to construct the bed on it and some minor other things so let's check this trailer out quickly here it's pretty much do-it-yourself kind of trailer there are no bearings or anything the wheels are just riding on the shaft there are 45 millimeter bushings inside the, the wheel hubs and it's just riding on the shaft. I have stress tested this thing out pretty heavily. Here are some pictures of it, very heavy log loads on it. And this thing does not break. So I think it's fine for a drum trailer. So I think let's start this build off. And uh, first things first, I have to get this thing into the shop.
I mean, if this works, then this is the weirdest solution I have ever come up with. Okay, so I got this thing in here. Can't believe those screws actually worked, but yeah, whatever works, right? So I can't actually do anything here today. I have to postpone this because there's something weird going on with the power right now. Uh, the flickering is not due to the camera. Uh, so half of the lights in the shop are not working. And uh, I tested that I have very low power right now in the sockets. So I can't really run any power tools uh, at this time until the power issue is fixed. So I will come back in maybe a couple of days and maybe the power company has sorted out its problems by that time. Okay, got my power back now. And the first agenda is that I need to remove some unnecessary parts. Okay, so I got all the necessary parts cut. Don't really want to do any heavy duty cutting inside the shop. I mean, I do have fireproof insulation behind the OSB all around the shop, but still gotta be careful with sparks. By the way guys, check this out. This is a must have in a shop. Power cable on a roller. So yeah, this is a really useful thing. So I just finished cutting up all the uh, random pieces of steel. Steel is probably the most recycled material on the planet right now. But anyway, uh, I can start off building the bed now. And the first thing that I need to do is install a couple of hinges here and also here. So my idea for the dump bed is that it's supported only on two spots. Uh, when it's down lowered, it's supported on this section here uh, and on these two hinges here. But when the dump bed is up, it's supported by the hydraulic cylinders that I'm gonna install somewhere here, I'm guessing, I'm not really sure yet. If you have watched my videos before, I really never plan anything out ahead. I just uh, pretty much YOLO everything. So it's kind of hard to get going sometimes, but uh, once it starts going, it just continues to go nicely.
What? What is? What is this? What should happen? What? I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to be like this. What do you call this thing? Just broke in, into three pieces. I should maybe get a new one. I don't know. It's a bit iffy, I think. But uh, I don't know. Okay, I got the one out, but uh, the second one is completely destroyed. I can't get this one out. I mean, I could drill it out, but is it really worth it? I'm gonna test this kit out. Maybe I can get the bolt out this way. Nice and tight. Then you're supposed to hammer this thing in here. And you get this thing in here. Then I don't know, try to turn it out I guess. This is the first time I'm using this kit by the way. Not sure what's happening right now. Oh, I think it actually worked. Yeah, it worked. Got the broken bolt out of there, very nice. At least this uh, hexagon head won't fail like this uh, Philips head does. I mean, this handle is pretty broken. The mounting point here is uh, totally toast. So I think my only option for now is tape until I can get a new one. Oh yeah, I think Camarata would be proud of this fix. I'm amazed how well this thing can, can actually cut through steel so fast. This thing was worth every penny. Sure, it makes a ton of noise, but uh, that's why you wear these. So I got some parts here, the hinges for the latches, a new welding hook. I'm not gonna replace it just yet, I'm gonna wait until that one breaks again. Some drill bits, pins for the cylinders, four of them. Okay, so I need to drill some holes here. These plates are for the bed pins, will be these ones here, so the hole will go some, somewhere here. Yeah, pretty nice fit, I think, and, and now I just need to do three more. There we go. Okay, well, uh, let's uh, tack these things in place.
Okay, so I think I got it pretty straight. Don't really know how to properly install these. I'm just gonna eyeball the thing. I guess it's fine as long as it's straight this way and straight this way. So yeah, I'm gonna tack this thing in place now and then we'll do the same to the other side. By the way, check this uh, battery light out that I got. It has magnets, so it sticks to uh, all sorts of metal parts. Pretty powerful magnets as well. So here are the specs for it. So yeah, the light itself has a dedicated charger. Oh, crap. That looks like this. And the other end looks like this. And it also has a USB port. I'm not sure what that is for. Maybe that you can charge the battery with that USB as well. This is by the way the only light that does not cause any flickering to the GoPro camera that I have. So you can see no flickering going on at all. Ceiling lights that I have, you can see small amounts of flickering going on and that's annoying. So yeah, if anybody is interested in this uh, LED light, I'm gonna leave a link in the description where you can buy this thing. Okay, just uh, trying to make sure that this thing is straight. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is uh, trim these edges off. Okay, so I got my mounts installed for the bed and the next part is to build the bed itself. The quality of cut is pretty good. I mean, you could never get something like this with a cut-off disc. Okay, I have to drill some holes here again. Mm, to kind of ensure that uh, the hole is exactly on the same position, I'm gonna try a bit different method here. So I'm gonna try to drill through all these four blades with a single pilot drill, and later I'm just gonna use that pilot hole to drill the bigger holes out with this hole saw. Okay, so I have uh, four holes that should be on exactly on the same spot. And uh, now I can use the hole saw. <coughs> Okay, well, I got my first pin in place and this is the back pin and I still need to install somewhere here the hydraulic hydraulic pin, but it should empty it just like that. So 
so next order of business here is to start constructing uh, the frame of the bed itself so let's do that and for the bed i'm gonna try to re repurpose these uh, old box tubes that were on the trailer before <laughs> Okay, so I'm thinking I'm gonna tap these uh, bushings and then weld them into the pinhole here because I think later this will be really annoying to do. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, so I think I got them pretty well in there now. Okay, so I think this will not break. So while I have the dump bed upside down here, I'm also gonna weld from the bottom here. Oh my god, this took way too long. Also, as I expected, the ears did warp a little bit, so I had a bit trouble putting them back. I mean, sometimes I'm getting really good and decent welds, but sometimes I get absolute crap. Okay, so I got a lot of welding done. Welding with that thing is a bit of a pain, Mostly because it just takes so long time. Okay, so I guess let's continue this build. Ok, 
Okay, so next piece is uh, a structurally important piece. So I want to install a 100 by 100 tubing and that tubing is where the hydraulic rams will connect. Currently I'm not really sure in uh, which location I'm supposed to install the tubing. I guess when I finally get the hydraulics for it, uh, then I can start figuring this out. Logically, I would go with the 100 by 100 tubing, but I think I'm going to choose the 90 by 90 tubing because this, this one is um, 6 mm thick and the 100 by 100 is 5 mm thick. So that means this will be stronger and the weight will be roughly same. Okay, I'm going to stop thinking now and I'm going to go with this one. Uh, looks like it survived. The blade is not damaged. I guess this thing is a bit too much for this thing, but still it was able to get it. What did I do to you? Yeah, sure, why not? Whatever, I'm just gonna buy new ones. They are gone. Wow, I can actually feel my dose again. Good to know they're still there. <sighs> All right, so after standing at that press for like 30 minutes, my feet just froze up. Uh, but now it's a lot better. You know what? I think I need some hydraulic stuff here now. 
All right, so I will go get some hydraulic stuff. I got some hydraulic stuff here. Let's let's check it out. What I got. Okay, some hydraulic hoses, I guess. Okay, I will take them. Bunch of, I don't know, hydraulic fittings. Some more hoses here. This is heavy. Let's see what Santa got me. Wow, this is wrapped so heavily. These rams are beefy as hell. What gives? So guys, what do you think? Did I go a bit overkill with this ram? I'm pretty sure this ram is able to actually bend this trailer in half if the need arises. So one will go here and another will go here somewhere. And the reason I got them was because of the price. There are other reasons as well. For example, my tractor is plumbed for two-way hydraulics, so I didn't want to get a telescope cylinder. And another reason is because these rams are pretty thick and heavy and I don't think they will really ever break on me. So try to kind of picture how much this ram would cost. I think you will be shocked when I tell you the actual price for this ram. So some numbers on this ram. The ram itself is 15 millimeters thick. The cylinder is uh, 90 millimeters in diameter and the total length of the ram is 1 meter if closed and 1.63 meters if fully opened. So try to kind of guess how much this would cost. But keep one thing in mind guys. So I had a leaky cylinder on my Yanmar here, namely this one here. And this is a smaller ram that I got for the trailer. So the rod is uh, 40 millimeters and cylinder is 80 millimeters. So it's about uh, what, like five to 10% smaller. And I took it to a hydraulic shop to get the seals replaced. They asked roughly $300 for uh, replacing these seals out. So yeah, $300 to get only seals replaced on this ram. And now the price of this ram. $130. I'm not even joking here. And that RAM only seals cost me $300. $130, $300. A bigger RAM, a smaller RAM. That absolutely makes no sense. So actually this is not the first time I'm buying these RAMs. I got exactly the same RAMs for my tractor's uh, front end loader. So let's go check that out quickly. So these ones right here on my tractor front end loader. There's hardly any rust on them and literally zero leaks. As long as I don't uh, put them on the wrong angle or anything like that, I think they should be fine. Okay, so next step would be to figure out where I need to weld this shot to the frame. And I'm guessing something like this maybe. I also have to make sure it's not too far off in that direction. Because these cylinders have quite a lot of movement.
but yeah, I guess I figured it out. I'm gonna try to do something here. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so next piece that I need are the ears for the RAM uh, bottom part here. I'm guessing 15 is fine. Now I can tack weld this to the frame, then I can hook up the hydraulics and actually test this thing out.
Maybe I don't need hydraulics, maybe I can just lift it by hand. I just need to see how far it goes. Only 31 centimeters so far. That means this much still to go. I'm gonna try to push it to the max as I can, but I have to cut these ends off because it will hit this end pretty soon. Well, it's almost maxed out, I'm missing two centimeters. I just uh, hit the ceiling here, so I can't go any further. But uh, I think this is uh, enough. I mean, the grade is pretty good here. So I think uh, rocks definitely will fall off and uh, gravel also, no problem. Maybe uh, topsoil, very wet topsoil can get stuck. But to be honest, I don't think I'm gonna change this. I think this uh, grade is pretty decent. Glad I didn't need to hook up the hydraulics because that would have taken at least a couple of hours. So I'm thinking I'm gonna um, cut this uh, build up in two videos. At first I was thinking I'm gonna maybe uh, do this all in one video, but apparently it just takes so much time. And now I'm thinking this this build is just gonna be too long for one video. I'm guessing two will be fine. So I'm gonna wrap up this video now and in the next video I'm gonna start by welding everything together that needs to be welded. For example, I need to do welds here, here, everything down here except the ears for the cylinders. Everything here, down here, same on that side, and a bunch of more welding. So, so yeah, I'm gonna leave that all into the second episode. So, guys, thanks for watching this episode, and join me in for the next one when uh, we'll continue this build. Bye.